Nolan, and we are back for our second grade reading lesson. Are y'all excited? Woohoo! Let's get going. All right, so if you remember, on Monday, Farmer Nolan was a detective. I have a lot of jobs, don't I? And we worked on the same standard that we also focused on last week, and that is to recount stories, including fables and folk tales to determine their central message or lesson. So we've kind of been working on this standard for a while and we're gonna keep working on it, but that's great because it really helps us to be masters at it, okay? And so what we're gonna do, if you remember last week, we worked on the first half of our standard, which was to recount stories, which means to do what? Retell a story, that's right. And remember, we made our story element pizzas. Okay, and then on Monday, we were detectives and we looked really closely at the difference between a fable and a folktale. Does anybody remember the difference between a fable and a folktale? That's right, okay. So remember, a folktale, we read Jack and the Beanstalk, and a folktale is a story that has been passed down through generations. And it oftentimes, it has many different versions, right? And remember, it may or may not have a lesson. Then on Monday, we read a fable. Do y'all remember what fable we read on Monday? The tortoise and the hare. That's exactly right. And remember, a fable is, it falls underneath the category of a folktale, but it oftentimes has characters that are animals, but they have human characteristics. So the characters act like humans. And we can always learn a message from a fable. So that brings us to the last half of our standard, which is to determine the central message or lesson. And guess what? That's what we're going to do today. We are going to work on being able to figure out what it is that the author is trying to teach us. What lesson do we want to learn? And if you remember from um, The Tortoise and the Hare, what lesson did, could we learn from that story? We kind of talked about it on Monday before we finished up. What lesson could we learn from The Tortoise and the Hare? Yes, that's right, and I'm sure you've heard this before. Slow and steady wins the race. That's right. All right, so today what we're gonna do is we are going to read another fable and we're gonna practice determining the lesson of the story, okay? So remember, that's just trying to figure out what the author wants us to learn from the story, okay? So today, we are going to read a story called Tops and Bottoms, and it was written by Janet Stevens, which this is interesting because this Janet Stevens, she was also the author of the story, The Tortoise and the Hare, that we read on Monday, okay? So as you can see, I am a farmer today because we are going to be doing a little bit of farming in our story, okay? And I have some beautiful flowers here that are a part of my garden. And when we are done reading our story, we're gonna practice digging up those story elements and adding them to our chart. And we're gonna see how all of these story elements work together for us to learn the lesson, okay? So we're gonna read tops and bottoms written by Janet Stevens. And you're gonna notice this book is a little bit funny because it opens this way. Have y'all ever seen a book like that before? Kind of crazy, huh? All right, here we go. So as I'm reading, think about those story elements so we can dig them up out of our flower garden and determine the lesson. Once upon a time, there lived a very lazy bear who had lots of money and lots of land. His father had been a hard worker and a smart business bear, and he had given all of his wealth to his son. But all Bear wanted to do was sleep. Look at Bear. He is crashed in the corner, huh? Not far down the road lived a hare. Although Hare was clever, he sometimes got into trouble. 
He had once owned land too, but now he had nothing. He had lost a risky bet with a tortoise. What do you think that bet was that he lost with the tortoise? Maybe we could tie this into the tortoise and the hare. Maybe the hare lost the race, remember? So he had lost a risky bet with a tortoise and had sold all of his land to bear to pay off the debt. Hare and his family were in very bad shape. The children are so hungry, Father Hare. We must think of something, Mrs. Hare cried one day. So Hare and Mrs. Hare put their heads together and cooked up a plan. All right, what do you think their plan might be? Make some guesses, make some predictions. The next day, Hare hopped down the road to Bear's house. Bear, of course, was what? Asleep. Hello, Bear, wake up. It's your neighbor, Hare, and I have an idea. Bear opened one eye and grunted. We can be business partners, Hare said. All we need is this field right here in front of your house. I'll do the hard work of planting and harvesting, and we can split the profit right down the middle. Yes, sir, Bear, we're in this together. I'll work and you sleep. Huh? said Bear. So, what'll it be, Bear? asked Hare. The top half or the bottom half? It's up to you. Tops or bottoms? Uh, let's see, uh, Bear said with a yawn. I'll take the top half, Hare. Right, tops. Hare smiled. It's a done deal, Bear. Okay, so that means that the bear, whatever they plant, the bear wants the tops of the, of the plant. So Bear went back to sleep and Hare and his family went to work. Hare planted, Mrs. Hare watered, and everyone weeded. So they're all, what are all the rabbits doing? They're working very hard, right? And what is Bear, what is Bear doing? He is snoozing in the corner. Oh my goodness. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out. Wake up, Bear! You get the tops and I get the bottoms. <laughs> Trying to wake him up. Hare and his family dug up the carrots, the radishes, and the beets. Hare plucked off all the tops, tossed them into a pile for Bear, and put the bottoms aside for himself. Okay, so look, what do you see is going on here? So Bear said he wanted tops. But when you plant things like carrots and radishes and beets, those things grow into the ground. So the only thing that's on the top is like leaves. Oh my goodness. Clever little hare. Bear stared at his pile. But hare, all the best parts are in your half. You chose the tops, bear, hare said. Now, hare, you've tricked me. You plant this field again, and this season, I want the bottoms. Hare agreed. It's a done deal, Bear. So now Bear did what? He changed his mind, and he said this time, he wants the bottoms. So Bear went back to sleep, and Hare and his family went to work. They planted, watered, and weeded. So again, those hares are working hard, and Bear just went right back to sleep. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! You get the bottoms and I get the tops. Let's see if it was a good idea for Bear to get the bottoms this time. Hare and his family gathered up the lettuce, the broccoli, and the celery. Hare pulled off the bottoms for Bear and put the tops in his own pile. Once again, look at what happened. When you plant things like lettuce, broccoli, and celery, those things are on the top, and all you have on the bottom are roots. Bear looked at his pile and scowled. Hare, you cheated me again. But Bear, Hare said, you wanted the bottoms this time. Bear growled, Grr. you plant this field again, Hare. 
you tricked me twice and you owe me one season of both tops and bottoms. You're right, poor old bear, sighed Hare. It's only fair that you get both the tops and bottoms this time. It's a done deal, bear. So bear says, not again, I want both this time. So bear went back to sleep and Hare and his family went to work. They planted, watered, and weeded, then watered and weeded some more. Working hard all in a day's work. Do you think you should be like Bear or like the hares? Like the hares, yeah. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! This time you get the tops and the bottoms. All right, let's see if this time it was a good deal. There in front of Bear's house lay a high field of corn. Hare and his family yanked up every corn stalk. Hare tugged off the roots at the bottom and the tassels at the top and put them in a pile for Bear. Then he carefully collected the ears of corn in the middle and placed them in his own pile. Bear rubbed his eyes and watched. See, Bear, you get the tops and the bottoms. I get the middles. Yes, sir, Bear, it's a done deal. Hare tricked him again, because when you plant corn, the corn grows in the middle. Wow, that is a very smart Hare. By now, Bear was wide awake. That's it, Hare, he hollered. From now on, on, I'll plant my own crops and take the tops bottoms, and middles. Hare and his family scooped up the corn and hopped down the road toward home. They said, yikes, I'm getting out of here. Bear's had enough. Bear never again slept through a season of planting and harvesting. Hare bought back his land with the profit from the crops, and he and Mrs. Hare opened a vegetable stand. And although Hare and Bear learned to live happily as neighbors, they never became business partners again. The end. Okay, that is a fable that we just finished reading that actually comes from a European culture, all right? So I hope you loved that story. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take what we just read about tops and bottoms, about our story, and we're gonna see if we can dig up some story elements to add to our chart. And remember, we're trying to figure out the central message or lesson of the story, okay? All right, so first up, when we're retelling a story, as you remember, we have to start off with the characters. That's right, you don't have to start there, but you at least wanna include it, right? So we're gonna start off with our characters, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna come over here to my flower and we're gonna see if we can dig up some story elements. All right, you gotta go digging in this flower here and voila, okay? So who were the characters in the story? Before I show you, who were the main characters in our story? This is an easy one. Hare and bear, that's exactly right, good job. So we're gonna add the characters to our chart. So we have hare and bear. Next up, what was the setting of our story? Okay, gotta go to my next flower. I even have some gloves here. I maybe should have put those on. All right, gotta dig through the soil. Dig through the soil. We're thinking, we're thinking about the setting of the story. While I'm digging, you be thinking, okay? And, I've got it here, found it deep in the bottom of the soil. So what was the setting of our story? Meaning, where did the story take place? That's right, on a farm, right? It took place on Bear's, at Bear's land, okay? Remember, all that land Bear owned, it was given to him, and he was lazy and didn't want to take care of it. So, our setting takes place at Bear's Land, that's right, good job. Okay, so characters, setting, what was the problem in our story? 
we had a problem, right? And sometimes, you know, remember, sometimes our stories might have more than one main character. It could have more than one setting. It could have more than one problem, right? So be thinking about the problem as I'm doing my digging, okay? Farmer Nolan's getting her hands dirty, digging around for this problem. Do you think it's gonna be in the tops or the bottoms of my soil here? Tops. <laughs> All right, so what was the problem of our story? Good job, that's right, okay? Hare's family is hungry and needs to eat. So they decided to trick Bear. Okay, so we've got a problem here. Hare's family was hungry, so they said, you know what? We're gonna be tricksters. And did it work out for them? Yeah, it did. All right, so they're hungry, they needed to eat, and they decided to play some tricks. Keep that in mind because we have to remember our problem in order to figure out the solution, okay? But we've got character setting problem. Now we need our events, okay? So remember, events are just what happens in the story, okay? So be thinking as I'm digging. All right, I gotta find my events in this flower here, okay? Here we go, what were the events of our story? Beginning, middle, end. Good, let's think about it. All right, Hare makes a deal with Bear. In the beginning, Hare decided they were hungry, so he said, you know what, I'm gonna go to Bear and we're gonna make a deal. He and his family will work Bear's land and split the crop in half. So they said, we'll do all the work, but we'll just split the food. But Hare tricks Bear and always takes the best part. Right? So he said, okay, you want tops or bottoms? And he was being, being a very clever little rabbit. Bear realizes he is being tricked and decides to never make a dis business deal with Hare again. Okay? Beginning, middle, and end. In the end, Bear was like, wait a minute, never again. All right, so those were our events. And remember, we got to be thinking about how all of these work together so we can learn the lesson from the story. All right, next up, solution. What was the solution? Remember, if our problem was that Hare's family was hungry and they needed to eat, so they decided to play some tricks on Bear, what was the solution to our problem? Let's find it in our flower. Stop and smell. <laughs> all right. Let's go dig and think about that solution. Ta-da! Found it deep in the soil. Okay, Bear realizes he is being tricked. So he realized it, that was the solution. And he decides to never sleep through a harvest again. And then Hare and his family owned a vegetable stand with the money from the crops. So did Hare's problem get solved? Were they still hungry? No, because they decided to create a vegetable stand. And did Bear's problem get solved? Was he going to be tricked anymore? No, he said, never again. I'm going to do the work now. All right, good. So there's our solution. Now, this is the important part. So think with all of these things in mind, okay? The fact that Bear, you know, did he do the work at first? No, what was he doing? Snoozing in the corner, yes, okay? He didn't do any of the work at first, but Hare did, right? Hare's family, what were they doing? It told us in our story, they were doing what? They were planting, watering, and picking the weeds, right? Okay, so with all of those things in mind, what message, what lesson do you think you can learn from our story? Let's see if we can find it. All right, digging for that lesson, okay? We haven't really talked about this yet, so this we really gotta think really hard here, okay? Hmm, gotta go deep into my, into my flower pot here, bottoms. All right, what do you think? 
see if you see if what you are thinking matches with what Miss with what Farmer Nolan has here. Do not be lazy like Bear. Do you think that's a lesson we could learn from this story? Yes. Do not be lazy. It's not good to be lazy. Work hard so that you can get what you want, okay? Don't be lazy like Bear. You've got to be like the hare and work hard so that you can be rewarded and get what you want. Also, maybe we could learn the lesson of to be careful of people who are trying to trick you because Bear didn't realize that at first, did he? No, he was just as lazy as can be and he wanted other people to do the work for him. And that's not, no, you've got to go out there and get after it and you've got to work hard for what you want, okay? So, that is the lesson that we can learn from our story. All right, friends? And see, it was easy, right? You just got to kind of think a little bit more deeply in order to think about what the author is trying to teach you. You all did a fabulous job today. I hope you had fun here at Farmer Nolan's Garden, okay? Um, next week, we still are going to be working with the same standard, but Farmer Nolan's trying to make it fun. But next week, I'm not gonna be a farmer. So you're gonna have to tune in on Monday to see what we are going to do next. Okay, friends? So at home, make sure you're reading books. Read all the books that you have, okay? And see if you can figure out the lesson that the author is trying to teach you. Okay? I'm going to go plant my garden now. Bye, friends.